All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awakened Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I know it's so close to the solstice, so close to Christmas. I know you're all so busy. So thank you for taking the time to be with us here today live. And if you're watching later on the replay as well. And today, my good friend Elizabeth Wood is back with us. And we are going to be talking about the coming galactic waves. And some of what some of what we're going to talk about is how that clear wave will work on us how to take advantage of this time, what the best next steps are for our lives, and a glimpse of what 2023 holds. And oh my God, I'm fingers crossed that it's, <laughs> it's a good year. Um, yeah, I'm fingers crossed. It's like, I need some, you know, good vibes now. You know, it's like enough, it's enough is enough. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here, Elizabeth. Oh my goodness, you look wonderful. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm glad that I mean, I know it's been a crazy time for you, yeah. for me, <laughs> and from other from other people as well. It's been crazy, but I'm glad that we were able to make this work. And I'm excited to talk about what is coming up, right? Where I'm, I'm excited to talk about the the coming galactic waves. I'm I'm excited to talk about the new energies for 2023, and also like, <laughs> can we handle it? How about some some tools and techniques to help us ride the wave with ease and calm? Yes, the ease and grace. That's what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'll dive right in. You know, um, here we're on the brink of solstice, and it's a special, important day. And that's the first tool mm -hmm. is to pay attention to these cycles. You know, the human body, the human in general, consciousness in general works in cycles. The Andromedans actually have a, a name for it and it's a they consider it a language of the universe it's a third language there's the language of frequency which we use with our bodies we also use the language of light just like the angelic or the fairy do and we can translate frequency and light pretty well and we're going to be getting into that in 2023 a lot but then there's this third language about cycles and all these cycles within cycles within cycles it's like doorways to doorways to doorways and they're endless there's even cycles at the universal level and right now all of that's opening up so right right this minute the black wave of consciousness that all of the different prophets and, and even the indigenous here in ecuador talk about the black wave and the black wave has done a number on us. And over this year, we've got to talk with Alara and other people about these things and watching how it's unfolded. And it's hit the very bottom of the root chakra now. And so it's hit the bottom of the pot, all the fear, all the death, all the terror, all the stuff, all the separation, all the feelings of uh, free fall are in place. But there's always polarities to this too. The other part around, around the root is power and mastery, like Joe's noticing. <laughs> um, and it's all about sovereignty. And so this black wave has done us a great favor. It's pinged all the junk in the field in your body and your genetics. It's forcing you to look at your triggers and your reactions. And now it's to the bottom of the pot. So, for example, like a lot of animals on my farm dying over the past month um, in surprising ways. And, you know, these beautiful beings are trying to show us what is needed. I'm getting emails even now, people in emergency and crisis, their animals dying, their families dying. And there's this big, huge opening when it comes to the fear of death, which is honestly the number one program of all of the biggest programs in our field. I call them fields of limitation because they these programs are much bigger than just a program, like a cultural program. These are fields of limitation that humanity has been stuck underneath. And it's kind of kept us disconnected from what I'm gonna talk about next. And so these fields of limitation are these false beliefs that keep us as good slaves. And the first and most important one is the fear of death because there is no death. 
literally in science and mysticism and any branch of understanding that goes into depth, there is no depth. So we can't use our mind, though. I like what Dakey said, you know, she's reminding us that we're here to work with the heart at this point. So your brain isn't going to grok everything I'm saying. And that's the point. We're actually finally kind of coming out of this crushing tsunami of density. And the reason they called it the black wave is two reasons. One, because it's pinging all the densities. It's pinging all the trauma. It's pinging all of your reactions and your triggers and your personal self. And it's revealing at the same time your universal self, how genuinely strong you are, how truly capable you are. That's where the mastery piece is coming in now. And then, of course, the black wave is black because, as the native Kogi here in Ecuador say, the black, the black is where the seed grows. The shadow is where the seed sprouts. It doesn't sprout when left out on the ground. It sprouts when buried in the darkness. And that's the... That's the code for earthly wisdom that's in, that's in your body. That's the code name for the earthly wisdom in your body coming alive now. And so we're 30% through this galactic cycle that we're in. And one of these layers of cycles that's really important for you to attend to and to understand is the 12,000 year galactic cycle. The galactic current sheet created by the black hole at the center of our amazing galaxy. We are really lucky because our planet's way out on the edge of our galaxy. So other planets closer to the center of the galaxy, they go through these cycles faster than we do. So we actually have a chance to get our feet back on the ground and rebuild our civilizations and relearn a bunch of things and remember a bunch of things and other planets don't necessarily have that opportunity as quickly as they might go through shifts they end up going through another one so for us it's every 12,000 years and this current sheet acts like a big broom and it forces a lot of matter material hint hint there is no dark matter <laughs> um it's it's all torsion, it's all movement, it's all this language of orbits, the language of cycles. But this big, huge galactic sheet, it pushes matter in front of it, and it begins to set off a chain reaction in solar systems, planets, and stars. As it moves this matter forward, it's electromagnetic in nature, so very, very staticky but it's actually full of ma matter, material, dust, particles, stuff. And when it's right on top of us right now, so all of our planets in our solar system, you've been noticing probably some headlines about Mars waking up or about Jupiter heating up or Neptune's acting weird. Well, and or Pluto, Pluto's atmosphere is 20% disappeared suddenly. What just happened? Well, it's all one thing. It's part of this cycle. So every 12,000 years this happens, and then what, what's happening to our electromagnetic field is our ozone is, is depleting to a certain amount, but our electromagnetic field is disappearing. It's 30% gone now. On other shows, I've, I've set it up to as high as 50, but I actually got on the phone with the professor that I study under and his name is Dr. Ben Davidson and I got on the phone with him and I asked him direct questions about a lot of things and one of them was clear you know get me clear on exactly what we're looking at with our electromagnetic field and we're looking at an exponential loss so it's taken probably about 30 years for 30 percent of that to disappear maybe more 60 years but now it's speeding up. So we're losing more faster until it'll be a really dramatic free fall, a quick disappearance of it. And then we go through a pole shift. And what we're looking at is what we know as these cataclysms. And this isn't a bad thing. 
at no point in time does any of these actually wipe off any all life on earth or anything like that there have been terrible cataclysms but it was because a whole bunch of things happened all at once the last one that happened 12,000 years ago only four percent of the species died and there wasn't hardly even in comparison as many humans as there are now so here we are at the end of this particular age, but why why this one? Why are there so many people here for this one? Well, because this one is also the end of an 800,000 year cycle. And that's 66, 12,000 year cycles we've been through as Homo sapien. I know that people are gonna say that Homo sapiens are only so old, but that's not true. And the, the archeological, understanding has gotten longer even since I started college. So they used to try to tell us that it was 100,000 years when I was in college. And now we know it's much, much longer than that. And I always say, you know, add a whole lot more time on or double or triple the time that people say something really is. Now, 800,000 years ago, Homo erectus was our ancestor and an incredible intelligent being who used fire and made tools and did amazing things and made art just like us and then that's our cousin but the event that happened there was really no reason for homo sapiens to appear there was a spiritual event in fact homo erectus was around for a million years very successfully with lots of different climates and traveled all over the world why then aren't we in a homo erectus body because it wasn't a physical event that occurred it was a galactic and spiritual event that occurred because it was finally time for homo sapiens to arrive this is a grand experiment on this planet just as any planet goes through their own experiments of consciousness and Gaia is no different and so this was all planned out even the amazing dinosaurs they prepared the way we should be so grateful to t-rex that's so funny that'd be a weird t-shirt i'm grateful for t-rex um i gotta have a sense of humor about this stuff because it's it's really intense well, what I'm telling you is that here we're at the end of another cycle. It's time for a new species to arrive. There isn't really technically, again, any physical reason why there should be. Because Homo sapiens have done quite well for themselves over 800,000 years. It's a spiritual event. And so the spiritual event, which that's when we get into mysticism. And here we combine anthropology with mystic mysticism and that gives you a bigger fuller picture we combine that with geology and astrophysics and all of these pieces you need them all to make it make sense and it does so we're in for an interesting ride in the next 20 years our electromagnetic field is going to disappear entirely our sun is going to have a supernova we are going to be in a very amazing time of change and it will be a time for Homo Luminous to come onto the stage. So that's the bigger, broad overview of where we're at. Then we come back down to where we're at in this very moment. We're on the brink of the solstice, a special day where a lot gets opened up. We're going to be facing into the galaxy, which means that galactic information, which is part of a larger network of human collective we might call it the galactic human collective that's where we hear about things like pleiadians and syrians and arcturians and orion people etc the galactic human collective is coming online it wasn't available for most of the time we've been here as homo sapiens because of the matrix the matrix was an actual fourth dimensional structure built around the planet for several reasons which we can't get into today that has to do with ancient history and different kinds of beings being involved in or meddling with or supporting our experiment here. So we have this, we've had this matrix that's cut us off. We have a collective that only just got really turned back on in 2009. 
the human collective was purposefully cut off. You weren't able to perceive and feel the great human collective as easily until 2009. And ironically, it's because of the internet that that occurred. That was unexpected. That wasn't supposed to happen, but it did because the collective is going to inevitably connect to Indra's net one way or another. Life always finds a way. And so that collective, we're getting hooked back into our galactic collective now. And it's going to be very interesting what happens. I'm, I'm here to help you and support you in this. Because I get this little bit of a glimpse. And that's my job, is to be the human cheerleader here. And make sure we know what we're looking at. So what you need to do is really get grounded, get your feet barefoot on the earth. I know it's cold up north, but do what you can. Hug some trees. Get really grounded in your body tomorrow. Take some time. Sometime, even if you have to work, take some time during the day to get really grounded. Because you're being asked to hook into the power of the planet and her wisdom and knowledge that she's carried through multiple ages, far, far longer than us. And of course, then connect to the galactic collective. And it's just going to be the beginning of that. But the beginning of that will initiate what's called the clear wave. It'll feel like you have a little bit of a break for the holiday. But as January rolls around, the clear wave is going to come. And this is something that people aren't going to see coming because it's clear. Clear light. Clear light is the ultimate revealing light. Clear light lets you perceive reality as far as you can possibly see it. And the clear light's coming to do something specific. This wave's going to happen instantly. It's not going to take a whole long year to unfold. It's going to happen swiftly, like a hammer, and it's here to shatter illusion. So the other thing you should do tomorrow is sit down and make a list. Make a list of things that you know are an illusion. Let's start with death, death, money, time. There's a long list, but start there. Start with what you know, what you've been taught, what you have been inheriting in your lineage every one of you has a mastery lineage that's going to come online this next year and that mastery lineage comes from other humans from other places in the galactic collective and as january rolls around the shattering of this illusion is going to be very personal because you have a personal bubble you think you're separate you think you're separate when you have desires and fears. And those desires and fears, they paint and create sets of traumas and experiences that make it feel like you're all alone. But as you've discovered in all this self-work you've been doing on yourself, you're not. And you can feel that you're not. And Indra's net, I-N-D-R-A, Indra's net, it's an ancient concept. It's the second dimension. The second and first dimension are really coming to play now. It's very important that they are fully online for the rest of the 12 dimensions to go through their cycles of change too, which also have a very incredible rainbow of changes to go through. And as the clear light comes and shatters these illusions, there's going to be events that occur around you that cause you to need to connect to others in a different way, in a more intimate and vulnerable and transparent way. And they're going to do the same. And the people who can't handle transparency, can't handle vulnerability, the narcissists, the clinical narcissists, the psychopaths, they're not going to be able to handle this because it's going to make them look bad. And they can't possibly look bad. They've been their their wiring their experience what they're here to accomplish in consciousness is going to be very profound we may see actually see psychopaths and narcissists finally be able to heal when all of us thought they couldn't uh, that's possible 
I, I am not leaving anything off the plate of what's possible over the next several years. But 2023 is the beginning of our reconnect to the galactic collective and the reclaiming of the ancient knowledge that was stored here on this planet. And I mean stored, storage. This planet is a combination of two different planets, the soul of Gaia and the physical planet called Lyra. And those two combined create Earth. And Earth has grown and created her own storage of wisdom too, stored in one of the most magnificent magnifiers of electromagnetic power, the crystals. And every rock on this planet is a crystal. And every rock on this planet has wisdom and knowledge. And there's going to be more and more masters of this, masters of the crystal realm. Many of you might be reclaiming your lineage as a master of that realm or a master of the water. The water also has memory. That's coming up big time too. There's mastery around water. There's mastery around destruction, like fire. Destruction is very important. It's one of those laws of the universe that we have to always attend to and, and actually appreciate and have gratitude because we wouldn't be able to live at all without it. There's going to be mastery of integration. Many of you will be masters of integrating and you're going to help other people. Others are going to be masters of the network, the Indra's net, the galactic and earthly Indra's net that's coming online for consciousness, for human consciousness. Many of you are masters of that. Others are going to be masters of or already realizing they're masters of the dimensions. I feel like my lineage is pointing me in that direction. I'm here to hold the dimensions open for everybody, which I'm doing now. You can feel it when I talk to people on these events because I'm not just speaking from a 3D level. I'm able to hold all the dimensions open and take you on this journey, but it's your journey and you're a human, so you have the ability to have the dimensions open for yourself too. And we can all dabble in all these masteries. You're not relegated to anything. That's the cool part. That's what's coming. The rainbow. The next wave, 2023 is going to start out with a crushing blow to illusion, a shattering. And what happens when you take a beautiful shattered piece of glass and you shine it in the light? You get the prism, you get the mastery of light. The truth is that light is so much more important and more grand in the scheme of things than people realize. The, the whole spectrum of light that we're told, it, it seems to have a beginning and an end. That's a lie. There's a whole lot more light that you are being kept from. And that's gonna get revealed too. Many of you are masters of light. But when your reality gets fully shattered and all the illusions of your separateness get shattered, those little glinting glimpses are going to now become the wave. The reason why this next year is so different than any other years, because it's not happening to you anymore. You get to create the wave you want. What is the wavelength or frequency you're going to hang into? What's the mastery you're here to bring through from your galactic lineage and from your earthly lineage? What is the templates, the new templates, the universal templates that are going to be revealed? So over the next several months, January, February, March, I'm going to be teaching about these things. I'm going to be bringing you to perceive very, very literal scientific and mysticism-based galactic wisdom templates, these spheres of influence. They're more complex than a template. They're spheres because it, it's the whole deal. It's 360 degrees. It's not just a flat uh, sort of like a piece of paper that you fill in. It's not a worksheet. It's an experience. It's a full body experience at this point. And then what's coming up from the earth too. There's natural law that needs to be remembered and relived and re-embodied by us. But you get to choose now. It's not going to feel like it's happening to you anymore. 
it's going to be the beginnings of sovereignty. 2023 is the entrance of true sovereignty, sovereignty and mastery. It's just the beginning, though. And it's going to be very strange. It's going to feel very like very much like a, a dream. That's good. And as the electromagnetic field disappears more, we'll get more access to the real light, the light that you haven't been taught about, right? That I haven't been taught about. We're going to get access to all the memories of the earth because as she pulls her field in, she also reveals more. And our bodies are going to begin to acclimate to this very quickly because you're a human and humans are really good at adapting especially under pressure. Look at you. Look how you survived all, all of these years and all the stuff you've gone through. And you're still here. Look how brave and powerful and strong you really are. And there's more to come. And you're here to make sure that that's available in consciousness. That's what the entrance of Homo Luminous looks like. And I want to get everyone started on, well, how do you create your own wave then? Because you are, you are already a wave. So how do you work with that? Literally, you're a wave. Your soul is a wavelength. And you need to know what that is. So how do you know that? How do you figure out what your lineage really is? How do you lay stuff out so that you can prepare the earthly and galactic playing field for yourself from 2023 onward? And that's what I'm offering through Alara's um, platform exclusively, a, a basically a preparation class to start this next year outright. And it's going to be powerful, I think. I'm really excited about it. Because I, I saw it and I, as we got closer and closer to this call, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get Alara my information. Because I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. <laughs> and then I realized, I know, I can see it. This makes sense and took it together and turned it into, all right, this is going to be our, our entrance into 2023, the most strange and amazing year of humanity ever, <laughs> pretty much. So that's what I see. That's how I'm perceiving our reality at this moment. You know, I, for me, everything that you're talking about, it sounds um, so on point to where we are and how far we've come. And the point that the, what you said about us being a wave is like, oh, I never thought of it that way, right? But when you look at it that way, it's like, you know, we are light, right? And we are frequency and we are vibration. We're not matter or just matter. We're truly, we truly are that wave and that frequency. And what I was saying this yesterday in my membership call is like, how do you want your 2023 to be? What do you want to experience? What do you want to create? What do you want to bring forward? What do you want to bring forth, right? And, and I was talking about qualities and frequencies and experiences. But the, and the thing is like, when we are, you know, like you said, it's going to be like the end of, of illusion per se, right? And so we've been living in so much illusion for so long. And I know sometimes it's difficult when those illusions are, uh, what cracked open whatever you know it's yeah. difficult because it's hard for us to be like am i this am i that am i this? am i who am i what am i what's going on right it's so it's it's kind of hard in the in, when you're in the midst of it to make sense of it but once it once the dust clears you know then it's like oh okay this is good right so you know some people might go into a little bit of fear and shock it's like oh my god things are going to shift and change but things have to shift and change and things are always shifting and changing Yes. Right. Things are always shifting and changing. But now it's like you said, we're going to be more in our sovereignty. And what we want is to be in our sovereignty so that we can be at the forefront of the next wave of the next evolution of being homo luminous that we truly are. You know, it's, it's not like we're becoming something new. We are that we're just, you know, getting rid of all the illusions. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. We already are that. But we have all these illusions that are covering up our luminosity our light of, of who we truly are and once those illusions start to break away fall apart because there's these um these little pockets that are starting to open up right 
And as these pockets get bigger and bigger and bigger, people start to see, oh, that's possible. Okay, it's happening over there. All right, so maybe it's, it can happen over here. Here meaning to that person, that collective, you know, and to us. And so it's scary, yes, but it's also very exciting and that the truth of it, you'll feel it in your bones. You'll feel it inside you, the truth of what you're saying right now and what we are wanting to experience for those of us who are a bit more conscious than, you know, the layman, right? It's like, we're a bit more conscious, we're a bit more aware, we have a bit more understanding of what really is going on. And so we are, you know, it's kind of like we're on a precipice, right? But it's like, be strong, we are strong, we've been through so much, we can go through this as well, but let's go through it with more, you know, like grace and peace and joy and ease. And that comes from trusting and knowing that it's going to be okay. It's going to be good. We have support. We are connected to our galactic families. And that's going to help us to get through the, you know, some residual 3D mind-based fear limitations, right? Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, Joy is saying, you know, lots of trauma and hurt, painful memories coming up to let go and release. Don't do that. Not that's not the first step. The first step is to feel it, to go in and let it actually be felt. You have to feel the pain in order for it to finally be dissolved enough. Then you let it go. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. I think that's a missing step because we don't want to be uncomfortable. But Joy, imagine as people are going through all this stuff, imagine being able to be in a room full of all these different frequencies, all these qualities of light and being able to stand in the energy of certain qualities of light and let it burn away anything that got trapped there, let it burn away trauma. When we heal trauma, it actually feels like a dissolving or a burning. It can be physically painful, which is why we avoid it. That's exactly what you should be doing. So there's been a, a lot of un, unfortunate sort of training around trauma about, well, just let it go or just give it away. No, you don't want to do that because it's incredibly precious. It's full of lots of information. What, what you've done is you've checked out a book called pain, <laughs> some kind of pain, some specific issue. You've checked that book out. You're like deep in this book now and you don't want to give up your place in that book. Keep going because then you get to the back of the book where all the answers are and you want to know what freedom feels like. You'll find out it's in the back of that book. You got to be willing to feel it in your body fully, right? And as, as we all are actually waves, we're waves, wavelengths, then, then us as a, as this sort of what we might call the awakened collective, people realizing that there's an illusion going on and that that's got to shatter and that these systems have to literally disappear really in order for them to be grassroots built back up by our local people. And local's the only way humans function. You don't function at a global level you function at a local level and that's really important then what's going to happen is there's going to be what's called cohesion or um basically like harmonization all these awakened collective people they're going to start to ride together and that's going to be the wave of our creation then we are happening to humanity's consciousness. It's not this other outside wave happening to us anymore. We're the wave that happens to humanity. And however the revealing of what Homo Luminous ends up being, um, I think you're quite right, it's a revealing. And it's going to be really intense because there's a lot to clean up. There's a lot of layers 800,000 years of layers of subjugation to clear. So it's very necessary for us to acknowledge and recognize what is subjugation, what is these, what is trauma, what are these kinds of pain? 
they're full of information. It's, it's quality information. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. And that's, that's one of those big illusions that have to shatter. That you're suffering, that you're discomfort, that it shouldn't exist. That's a terrible field of limitation that was brought here. That's not an original human thinking. That was put on you to make sure you're a good slave. The and idea that just, this, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say when it comes to like trauma, suffering, you know, all those, you know, difficult experiences that we've had in our lifetimes, whether this lifetime that we remember or other past lifetimes, all of those experiences have, like you said, information for us, like wisdom for us. So there's a reason why we are experiencing it. There's some sort of awareness that we are not getting yet. And so if we just try and let go and release, we're not getting the wisdom and it's still going to stay in, in us, within us. It's not really getting clear to release until we get the the, the answers or the awareness of what that was, why, why not, 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 not even why it happened, but what is the information in there for us to know? Yes. And the knowledge that is about the truth of who we are and, and, and what reality really is. To me, exactly. that's what all of that is all about. So I, you know, I'm a, I'm a healer and I do clearing and all that stuff, but I always say, I'm not going to do a blanket clearing. You have to know what it is that you're willing to release and let go of, but you have to also be willing to feel it and experience it first deeply to get the wisdom, to get that awareness, to get that information so that you don't have to keep repeating it. And it, the cycle doesn't have to keep continuing, right? So it's, it's, we have to be courageous, right? We have to be strong in looking at those moments and those spaces and those places that are difficult i've i've you know i just did an inner child healing call on saturday or something right awesome. and and after that you know still stuff is coming up right old stuff that i had like pushed aside like i don't know i don't know what that means but it's all coming up and i know it has to come up because it's something i need to see i need to you know tap into get the wisdom of it and also at the same time the acceptance of you know who i am right and so all of that is going to help us to be more clearly the way that, that we truly are. Because even, st you know, it's, I feel like sometimes this, the way that we are, that we're talking about, is sometimes a bit distorted because of those experiences that we're not willing to look at. It's a pair of glasses, right? <laughs> we look through lenses and there's lots of lenses. And the more lenses you gather, the more distorted reality looks. And then we start projecting. Yeah. But I think you're quite right. And that's also been the experience I've had as a healer. And now I, I might say, I'm here to empower people just like you and so many of the beautiful people on the call. We're here to empower people to heal through recognizing I drew this in for a very important reason and trying to clear it or get rid of it, um, it's going to draw that or worse back in. Back. And yeah. sort of what Julie's saying, the way out is always through. And that's the, that's the secret to it, but it's very radical. And it's okay to be radical, by the way. I like this idea of radical sovereignty, radical self-care, radical compassion, radical acceptance, mm -hmm. radical unconditional love. Radical unconditional love, I think unconditional love is already radical, but the reason being is because all these things exist in consciousness because source, source God, the universe, actually really needs it. So that big program I'm alluding to, and you're going to notice it everywhere now, just like the illusion of death, you're going to notice this one big, it's big. This one is the universe isn't already perfect. And that's why they create things like a fake universe online. Because then you can control it more and make it more perfect. According to who? Not according to source. Source already made the universe. And it's already perfect. The only requirement for love in this universe is existence. And this is such a radical concept because I'm literally telling you that half the universe, which looks dark and evil and terrible and awful, is really important and is truly loved by source. 
Why? Because all it is is consciousness under pressure. That's all it is. It's made of light too. In fact, I would argue that there's more light contained in your trauma than all of your comfort because it's under pressure. So what I'm saying to you is as you reclaim what wavelength you really are, your essence, what part of the rainbow of reality you have always been connected to, as you reclaim that, you're gonna reclaim all of what that essence looks like under pressure too. So let me give you some examples like, um, my essence is luminosity. So my wavelength is probably, I would say, whenever I have people look at me or whenever I um be when I'm whenever I'm seen, say, by my teacher, they always say, your light, the light is platinum. It's platinum light. And platinum light light is kind of a bridge between heaven and earth. And I've also been told that by guides. I've been told that by lots of things. So I've got clues, just like you. We all have clues in our life that's going to reveal these things to us. You know, if you've got blue dragons hanging out all the time, well, you might be blue. <laughs> but that wavelength has energy. It's got power. It has intelligence. And that intelligence is you. And so if you put platinum light under pressure, what does it look like? Well, because platinum is actually a heavy metal, if you put heavy metal under pressure, it looks really dark. It looks really gnarly. It looks like a big, huge mess of demonic nature, which is exactly what I've gone through in this life. So my counterpart, my shadow, my trauma, has, it, it, it wasn't necessarily people. Honestly, it's been demons and other stuff. It's been aliens. It's been stuff that looks really not from here that doesn't make any normal sense. <laughs> and then trying to heal from that and breaking it open into galactic universal levels of compassion. When I've been able to break open that trauma, I've only entered into the highest states of consciousness that my particular wavelength can can do, which is universal compassion. And I've done that by facing that trauma head on. And so I'm, I'm aware that that can happen. And then that's been revealed as, oh, this is a process for all of us, that your trauma is really specific. And, and when it gets revealed, you're gonna bust open into something really incredible. If platinum light is a great revealer, it illuminates reality, luminosity, illuminates parts of consciousness that are hard to get to, then platinum light under pressure is going to look like a galactic war. It's going to look like a really big, terrible war in consciousness. But when you break that open, it reveals the next level of what the universe offers and it turns out it's universal compassion. And that's when I say the only requirement for unconditional love is existence, that's universal compassion. And I mean it. And I mean it whenever any demon shows up in my house, I look at him and I say, well, hello, brother. What are you here to come and eat? <laughs> Please show me so I can clean it up and then you won't show up anymore. And that's another piece too, it's another tool Notice when stuff gets hooked into you, whether it be through people or, or traumas get revealed or entities show up or weird stuff's going on. What are they there for? They're there for something. They're coming after something inside of you. That trigger is connected to something. So you keep doing the self-inquiry process. It's literally the greatest tool you could ever use in this next uh, shift is keep looking at yourself and saying, well, what did this thing show up for? Oh, shame. Wow. Okay. I'm going to unwrap my shame and it's going to turn into something beautiful and incredible because it's been put under pressure, which we then we name it shame. But 
what is it really revealed when you put it under the light of your consciousness of your wavelength what is it really you see shame might look a certain way for me and it's going to look a very different way for you even though we have a universal term for it when it when you unwrap your shame it's going to give you a gift that will be unique to your wavelength so when i say the title of our show today was the galactic waves the coming galactic waves i'm talking about you you thought i was going to talk about other waves like i usually do i'm not i'm talking about you you're the coming galactic wave <laughs> which i think is so great yeah that's powerful yeah absolutely and you know and that shows us again that we're not victims and we're not you know puny little anythings we're we're powerful beings and it's possible for us to be more have more create more from that place of sovereignty and grace and ease that we would like to and you know part of it is about you know again acknowledging who we are accepting who we are and empowering ourselves to go out there and create go out there and experience go out there and connect with you know our, our galactic collective and see where are we going as a as a collective you know of humanity where are we going where do we want to take us now moving forward right so if if we are the wave and we are how do you want the wave to behave mm -hmm. right so it, it's not just a, a passive observer experience now it's a creation of the of the wave what is the wave going to experience how is the wave going to flow like I don't even know how to, you know, what analogies to use for that, but it's exactly. about us, you know, being ourselves, being empowered and trusting that as we are the wave, we are creating our future, we're creating the next reality, we are creating the next level of consciousness for all of humanity. Yes, exactly that. And <laughs> so we can, you know, I think studying, studying wave, waves, <laughs> Uh, I can kind of give you a glimpse of like, okay, well, what would a wave of consciousness like this do? What would all of this galactic connection look like? And how would it affect us? And we'll get into that in this class that I'm going to teach mm -hmm. in, in like a couple of weeks. Um, but the the wave can look like particles. Because photons, for example, which are light, they can be both at the same time, a wave or a particle. So are you. Mm -hmm. And this has to do with something so precious in mysticism, your attention, not your intention, your attention. Intention's useful, but unless you have your attention on the intention all the time, then it won't work. Yeah, you, everybody's figured this out when they were trying all the the usual ways of manifesting and it didn't work. It didn't work because you you weren't putting your attention on the source field from which all the things you were trying to manifest was going to arise. You're putting your attention on the, the thing that you wanted, whether it be ob an object or a relationship or an experience. You were putting your uh, attention on the wrong thing. So all we have to do is look at our earth. What does the water do? What does the waves do? What does the light do? If we understand that, then it makes much more sense that our consciousness is not different at all because you're mostly water and light, literally. So that's easy. <laughs> now we just got to get our physics out and look at well what does water do and what does light do it's more interesting and more unusual than it seems because water has many many forms it doesn't just have the forms that we have on earth that that you see on the surface there's more there's more water under the mantle of the earth there's three times as much water under the mantle than there is on the surface but it doesn't look like the water on the surface it doesn't act like the water on the surface so when you put water under pressure what does it do it does some very unusual things it creates crystal networks 
And that's exactly what we are doing. We're creating a crystal network. Your body's full of crystals. I always thought it was funny that people would say, we're going to have a crystalline body. And I was like, no, we already have it. Kind of like what Alara is saying. It's just being revealed. Your body's got loads of crystals in it. You have iron and copper and calcium and silica and all these fantastic, you have quartz in you. You are you already have crystals. You're not going to suddenly gain a crystalline body. You already are. And that's kind of, I think, one of the illusions that's going to shift is that you already have access to 12 dimensions all at once. You already have a crystalline body. You already have the water memory of the entire planet in your whole system. You already have all the light all the photons and the wavelengths. And then all these things, of course, are working with your wavelength. So you need to know what your wavelength is. That in mysticism, we call it an essence. And the quickest way to understand what that is, is to know what is your greatest fear and what is your greatest desire. And that's gonna change. It's going to change as you grow, as you change, as you become more one with all things. But if you keep tracking what you fear and what you desire, it's going to reveal a lot. And it's going to show you more about who you really are. So if you don't know what your wavelength is, what your essence is, just start there. Just, just start there. And over the next year, with your attention on those things and your attention on your own singular true self your wavelength that's not separate from anything else but but your wavelength over this next year that will reveal itself and you'll be able to name it and it'll be unique it'll be unusual i always thought my mind was wonder but your essence is not an action i want to point that out so there's some rules to this your essence is not an action luminosity is not an action wonder is an aspect of luminosity because as i'm just like a big giant human flashlight as i shine on something and it can be even true evil i'm amazed i'm in wonder i'm in wonder all the time i live in a state of goldfish level wonder <laughs> and i'm i have more and more fun even when drama is going on i'm still having a lot of um amazement happen all the time and so my greatest fear for example was always that i wouldn't know what i was looking at that i wouldn't have enough knowledge that elizabeth the personal person the individual self wouldn't have enough knowledge i i i would genuinely say that was probably one of my greatest fears over all these years and my greatest desire well being able to access all possible knowledge and so all those things make a lot of sense. If you kind of reverse engineer what I'm saying, it begins to make sense. And so you contemplate these things. Contemplation, I love how Richard Rudd teaches it. He's like, contemplation is a seed that you place in the field in front of you and you go about your day while the seed is there and you notice the seed as you go about and you do all of your daily life and, but then the seed begins to bloom and then it turns into this magnificent flower and by the time it's ready to fully reveal itself you can't take your eyes off it and that's exactly what will happen the other thing i want to talk about real quick is change i i would consider myself an expert on culture change how does culture change and how do you make it change faster it's a dangerous question. Really, really dangerous. Well, I'll give you the secret. <laughs> the secret is, if you want to change culture really fast, and I mean politics and economics and social structures, and if you want to change culture really fast, you have to change the material world and your beliefs and ideas and language at the same time. 
And we've seen some very powerful examples of this in a negative way over the past few years. Imagine just how much change happened to us in the material world and our beliefs all at the same time to make humanity do things that we wouldn't have ever guessed humans would do. But you can use that same concept and you can be changing your reality all the time. When you change your physical reality and your beliefs and ideas at the same time, your world changes much faster. So when I say your attention needs to be on what beliefs are you going to shatter? What are your fears and desires? That's exactly what I'm talking about. And then in the material world, figuring out what those things are tied to. So for me, the knowledge and wisdom thing had to do with me being obsessed with reading articles all day long to the point where it became an addiction that I'm still having a hard time with because I really like keeping up to date on stuff. But it became an obsessive addiction. And so I had to change my access to it and say, I already have access to the Universal Library. I don't need to read all this crap on my phone. I don't need to be online downloading articles, thousands and thousands of, of articles. I don't need to go to college anymore. I already went to 10 years of university and ended up graduating, realizing that I didn't know anything. So that's the attitude to take is, okay, how can I change my reality? What is my greatest fears and desires and intentions? What are they connected to in the physical world that I'm doing, that I'm interacting with? And what can I be changing there? So instead I said, well, you know, the real internet is outside my door. All I need to do is go and take a walk every day in nature, and I'm going to find out exactly what I need. All I need to do is interact with humanity, and I'm going to be told the exact news I need to know. And what Alara is saying is trust. You got to trust that these are part of natural law. If you don't trust yourself, that's fine for now. But you need to trust natural law. And when you start trusting natural law, you'll trust yourself real quick because you're part of it. You're not separate from natural law. Natural law is complex, but very, very beautiful and is arising from the earth. But one of the first pieces of natural law is that you already have access to the true internet, to inter Indra's net. And the first place you should look for it is nature. And I found that to be true. I didn't have to fear not knowing or not having access to what needed to be known for all my clients or my my beautiful friends and students and and peers. It was that I had to stop trying so hard to go seek out knowledge that was framed in a way that isn't useful anymore. Because now I know exactly what needs to be known by literally letting go of any desire to know, any fear of not knowing, I don't have that limitation anymore. All I have to do is ask, Source, show me what this person needs to know right now. Show me what the collective needed to hear today, right before solstice. And that's revealed immediately because of the nature of my wavelength. And I am talking about my personal experience right now because that's what I've got. I can't necessarily use others' experiences while talking about these particular concepts. So I don't want you to think that I'm in my ego while I'm sharing what, because I have a huge ego, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you that there's a pattern here. And the best way that I can talk about it at this moment is from what I've experienced myself. But I'm I'm you. I'm not different than you. I'm not separate from you. So in this case, because natural law is natural law, the framework is going to be the same. The patterns are the same. And if you want to make those changes, ask yourself those questions. What are the problems that I'm having? What are my fears and desires? What are my beliefs and languaging around them? How are they linked to 
the physical world, what can I do to change both of them at the same time? And voila, you just tapped into professional levels of culture change for yourself. And this goes for businesses and families and marriages and friendships too. It goes for everything. It works very, very well. Watch for yourself as it, things start to change. So I hope that tool will be useful. Oh, absolutely. I totally, I, I think it's, it's awesome. And it, it gives us time to be present in the moment and reflect and, and be out of our heads really. And just being with the, whatever it happens to be, whether I'm, you know, wondering about me and my husband or just my husband or my family, or am I going to, when am I going to move back to Canada? Blah, 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 blah. Like all these different things. Right. And uh, you know, all these different things that are coming up at the moment, it's like, you know, all of that, can be looked at from this framework, from this tool. And I love the question about, you know, what is my greatest fear and what is my greatest desire? Looking at that, really, truly being honest with yourself and looking at that, because that is going to tell you so much about your life and where you're going in the future at the same time. Um, I think Sarah had her ha has her hand raised for quite a while. Sarah, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Hi, Sarah. Hi, dear. Hi, beautiful. I love your hair. <laughs> Thank you. It's a wild full moon. Yes. Okay. So here is here is my question. Um, uh, last night and two nights ago, I went from feeling just normal and fine to like being face down in my soup. I was so exhausted. I couldn't lift my head. And then again, last night in the middle of making dinner, I, I called my, you come stir this, I got to lay down. Um, and it was just out of nowhere and I'm not sick and I don't know what it was, but I feel like it's some kind of attunement thing and just curious about it. And, and one other thing is that I've been using a lot of new tuning forks and um, <clears throat> just wondering if that's, you know, getting my frequency right. Well, I like tuning forks, but it can be really intense for your body because the body, all your thoughts, all your feelings, all your epigenetic memory is kind of like a very complex symphony. And that's being played all the time. And then when we bring in tuning forks, it's kind of like, somebody just brought in the the timpani drum and they're banging it as hard as they can at f sharp <laughs> and it's like the the body symphony is like what the fluff and it and the body doesn't know what to do with it so it's like all right we're just gonna let it exist and and then then the body's like okay well what do we do with this <laughs> Um, and, and the body says, well, you know, the, the soul that is Sarah said that we needed this F sharp and we're going to do our best to integrate that. And it takes actually a really long time for the body to do that because you're reordering your DNA. It's, it's cymatics. Cymatics is how frequency creates form. And so your body's being told that it has to change form when you use tuning forks. Oh, <laughs> so that'll do it and then on top of it i guarantee you a very large percentage of everyone including myself even at this very moment have been dealing with exhaustion and migraines and weird stuff i have a weird little migraine even now don't underestimate what's coming from the galaxy we are being bombarded by new types of light people call it radiation but radiation has a bad connotation. It's not, it's not appropriate to name it all radiation. And most of it's brand new, like within the last two years. And so the past two years, I've been getting consistent complaints from people saying, I'm getting weird migraines all the time. I'm exhausted. Uh, I have different new pains in my body. All these things are happening. Well, all of those kinds of wavelengths are also very specific frequencies too. So not only do you have your own inner symphony of cymatics going on, then we have a bombardment of a brand new portion of the symphony 
with instruments that we've never experienced in in probably 800,000 years instruments that didn't exist in our symphony before now they're here and they're playing and no your body doesn't know what to do with these ones and there are all sorts of new ones happening and then just to top it off because we want to heal and we've been told that frequency heals us then we throw in some tuning forks so i'm not surprised at all that you're tired because sleeping is the only time your body has a chance to open the brain and the brain's lymphatic system your brain's lymphatic system can't clear all of these things and integrate any of them into its cymatic reality unless it's sleeping so you you have to sleep right now sleeping and just being are 100 percent necessary And then we start to feel better and then we push ourselves to do more normal stuff when we really should all be resting and sleeping as much as we can. And and that that's going to become part of our necessary culture changes to value the sleep and the rest and the naps and the the random uh, cat naps and the little pulling over the car for a couple of winks. That needs to be normalized because your body is constantly changing its symphony now it's not like it used to be and it won't ever be the same again as we all live through the this shift and and guide our incredible humanity through it all together so that's what i perceive as what's going on does that make sense it does and it makes more sense when i say that i normally need not 10 hours sleep and 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 my life is around getting it but last night and two nights ago i turned my bio mat on climbed into bed and watched groucho marx (laughs) (laughs) which was very restful thank you bless you have the happiest of holiday seasons so much joy so much light so much upper attunement may a miracle come to your body and everything be filled with so much light that you have no more pain and no more anguish all you feel is that the waves of light from the sun are healing you in every cell of your body and everyone on this call and everyone in the world may this season of light be so blinding that we raise all our attunements to just a status of love for every living being on the world oh thank you you're a master of blessings beautiful thank you sarah thank you thank you thank you all right there's more questions in the chat elizabeth all right let's do it Uh, all right so um which one were you seeing the from rayanya Uh rayanya right yep probably saying it wrong sorry um i noticed my sleep quality has changed dramatically over the past months i would wake up earlier have light sleep i used to be a sound sleeper yeah i I mean okay so people notice the schumann resonance we talk a lot about the schumann resonance in this in this world that we're in um the schumann reson resonance is getting higher and higher much faster and faster and faster what are the two things that cause that the electromagnetics of the earth changing and lightning well i know most of you probably don't study lightning but we have more lightning now and weirder types of lightning strange types of lightning lightning that people haven't seen before in fact Types of lightning that are so rare, now they're happening regularly. Why? Well, these three things all relate to each other. And as the electromagnetic field of the Earth goes into its excursion, it's an internalized field, then we get all this new stuff from space, new frequencies of space, literally. Like I said, they call them radiation. I don't want to call it radiation. Radiation isn't bad. It just is kind of like the color black, right? Isn't bad. It just is. And so we have that, which also makes lightning happen more often and all these different kinds like um, St. Elmo's fire and things like that. And um, as that occurs, 
then it's going to amp up the Schumann resonance at an exponential rate. So the Schumann resonance used to be really stable for a really long time at a certain frequency, something around 432 hertz. <laughs> it's not been that way for a while. It's been going up and up and up and up, and it will exponentially. So the Earth will ring. The Earth will change her frequency. Literally, she's like a giant tuning fork. You're surrounded in all of these changes. No wonder you can't sleep. But the other piece I want to point out is very important is, all right, so all these frequency-based changes are happening. That means all the human-made ones are happening too. And we have all these different things that they've been putting up in tower form all over the place on top of over the past hundred years, brand new kinds of frequencies that didn't exist before, everything from radar to radio and any whatever G's you wanna say, all of those now are just being put into this entire brand new system of frequency on top of it. You need to turn your Wi-Fi off at night. You need to disconnect your phones. You need to disconnect from the human-made frequencies so you can get your body to acclimate to the already huge bombardment of new things that will only exponentially continue. And you'll be able to have different kinds of experiences of sleep. But I want you to take a, a sleep journal. Start to make a sleep journal. Notice your sleep patterns, how they relate to certain cycles. It's not, here's what's amazing and what I'm intending to teach for the first part of 2023. It's not just the moon and the sun now that have a dramatic effect on human cycles. Now every star in the sky has a dramatic effect on you because the electromagnetic field is disappearing. I know so because I'm in Ecuador in the middle of nowhere and there's no light pollution where I'm at. Everything showing up in the sky the past two years is getting brighter and brighter and brighter to the point where you can't keep your eyes off of it because at first I thought that Sirius was a UFO, man. It was coming up so bright. It was like a rainbow, crazy spinning something. I could have sworn it was this UFO. <laughs> and then I got my star app out and I'm like, what is it? Oh my gosh, it's serious. And that's the kind of level of stuff that's happening where you're going to get connected to the galactic literally <laughs> and this is really beautiful it's going to be useful but you got to acclimate and acclimation honestly especially us westerners we're terrible at acclimation we don't spend any time integrating and acclimating i'm pointing at myself first on this one especially so we really do need to fall in love with integration again and be able to spend that time and rest, 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 and take those days off. And as much as I hate rescheduling stuff, I really have had to. I don't have a choice because this integration acclimation piece is so important. So that's my answer around this piece, especially. It's not just sleep that's changing, it's so much. Very good. And so then uh, Janine says, it seems as soon as we understand a new reflection of this, these cosmic light waves, we have to trash that and pick up a new understanding. This is exhausting and bears too much resemblance to a puppy chasing her tail. Will it stop? I feel that's a very specific perception. I have not felt that way at all. I feel like everything I learn about the new waves just builds on a greater, bigger picture, a broader picture, and that there's nothing to trash. But you're having a very important experience. So if you would, Janine, would you detail exactly what do you feel like you need to trash 
what what is it that you feel specifically what is it that you feel you have to get rid of in order to to feel more comfortable at this point with the information that perhaps has been laid out today it may be that you're getting laid other stuff too from other sources and i have no idea what those are so i'm not sure if it's what i've said today that's made it feel like confusing what but 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 i'm really most interested in what do you feel like you have to get rid of that's going to be that's going to be the most revealing clue um i think that will help us understand help me understand your question better what do you have to what do you feel like you have to trash exactly um and so if you can take a moment to to type that that i'll answer it um so Cassie says, I feel a, a, a strong question, but I'm having trouble putting it into human words. Fair enough. <laughs> human words are very limited. Perhaps you can feel it, but I think it has something to do with the natural equation, naturalness, and feeling completely alone in my illness of chemical sensitivities. Indeed. Well, I would say that I relate to this because I went to a movie for the first time in years and it was the Avatar movie and I hated it. It was terrible. Um, but the other thing was that I decided to eat popcorn and have a soda. I haven't had a soda in probably as long as I've seen a movie. And I it threw me into a major healing crisis. I was super sick like I'd been drugged for days because i was but how come i could do that years ago and not now well because my body isn't acclimated to the frequencies of those toxins there's incredible amounts of toxins in processed food especially soda and i was drugged <laughs> you when you have these chemical sensitivities it's because your body says hey we've worked really hard to get to this place over here where now you can like function and not feel so bad all the time and you got your energy finally back and look how hard you worked and then you know somebody comes in and sprays Febreze all over your hotel room and then you have an allergic reaction yeah because it's poison you're not wrong you're feeling alone because everybody else has been acclimating to poison and they're not going to live very long they won't this is partly why human lifespans have been shortened <laughs> so much so it's not that you're alone it's that it's just you're surrounded in a lot of people who are acclimated to the symphony of poison and you're not so keep processing your judgment because we judge everybody around us who can drink soda every day and then they wonder why they don't feel good and we judge them we judge them as ignorant we judge them in so many ways process that and then shine your light just be don't expect anyone else to be like you and if they can't then cut them out if they're in your household, then make some serious ultimatums. We don't have time to mess around anymore. If you really want to go through this shift fully and survive it with the incredible galactic and earthly symphony getting laid out and your body trying to get used to it on top of everything else, nobody said this was easy. This is how new species are made under great pressure. Humans don't change unless they really have to. And now they have to. So I would just say, understand what you're acclimating to and how beneficial it is for you to be resonating that way on behalf of all beings in your life. And don't judge anybody when they really like to drink their sodas, even though you recognize, ah, yes, this is them acclimating to literally the frequencies of poison. Just recognize it as their experience. Don't take that away from them. 
just emanate your experience. This is your test in sovereignty. The chemical sensitivities, which are very, very real and natural and normal, this is part of your attempt to become more fully sovereign and say, no, I have a space that is clean and clear of these things. And that's necessary for my well-being and survival. And I don't expect you to have the exact same ones because there's no two wavelengths in this universe that are the same, honey. So you're not going to be acclimating the same way as everybody else. And this is going to reveal more to you about your fears and desires too, which will shine more light on what your frequency is as your soul. Right. Alara, did you have anything to add about any of this? Nope, that was awesome. Great answer. But it is about, you know, staying away from judgment of other people and even yourself, you know, even of yourself, because sometimes, you know, when I think she she mentioned something about the illness of the chemicals, you know, even in that wording, the illness of the chemical sensitivities, I feel like there's a little bit of a judgment what from maybe other people, right? Of course, yeah, being projected on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, like kudos to her that her, her system is so clean, you know, so pure, so much purer. I drink Coke. <laughs> I do. I know. I know it's bad, but it's like, I have one glass. I need to stay awake, you know, but the thing is, um, and my husband's been telling me it's poison. It's poison. Stop drinking it. You have to stop. You have to stop. It's like, I know I'm going to I've cut back a lot. You know, I've cut back a lot. So it's like, you know, knowing that, knowing what your needs are, what you need, what my what my body needs to get through a day, you know, is important without ta without accepting judgment from others, judging myself for, for having the coke. I laugh now about it. Actually, it's like, I know I'm getting there. Right. But the thing is, it's like we all have that. I mean, I've cut back on sugar big time because I know it's a poison big time. I don't have any sugar in the house now. You know, so, you know, like we all go through our own process our own journey our own way of doing things right so accepting that about yourself accepting that about other people that's taking the high road and that's that, that's about being an allowance of each person's journey i agree it's all a process and everyone's so different because you're a unique wavelength in this world yeah and so like i always tell my husband that i just need a little bit because i need to get through this day I, I know it's an addiction right so we know we know what it is so as long as you're not clueless that's a judgment. I was going to say, as long as you're not clueless, but that's a judgment, I know. But as long as you are aware, then you have the capacity to change it if you, if, you know, if you want and when, when you get to that point. I mean, just me shifting from sugar to just only honey in my tea, that was a big thing, yeah. you know? So it's like steps, baby steps, you know? And baby so, steps. yeah, and so it's, not, it's not even about the things that are toxic in your, in your reality, like the Wi-Fi, et cetera. It's also about your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own emotions, yeah. right? Those are also toxic. So being aware of what those are for yourself and not projecting them on others the best you can, but also when other people are projecting their thoughts, et cetera, on you, don't take them, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, oh, that's not mine. <laughs> that's, that's not mine. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of acceptance of yourself and acceptance of other people and their journeys, you know, so... Sovereignty is responsibility, but it's also recognition and appreciation of the other's journeys. Yeah. And deciding what wavelengths are, am I going to surround myself in? Um, that's Absolutely. very important. So, you yeah. know, I was in Canada, right, for a month. I told you that, right? And, of course, my mother, her way of showing love is by feeding you all your favorite foods from when you were young, right? So all the things you like, that's what she's gonna make. So all the wonderful sweets, cause she makes the best Indian sweets, you know, <laughs> and she makes all of them. And so every day, what did I have? And they're all made with sugar and milk. And I don't know, you know, it's like, it was like, I was like, okay. But it's like, okay, I'll have these now cause I'm here and this makes her happy. And, and I told my body, body, when we go back, we're not going to have these anymore. So it's okay. Just, you know, like, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy <her> now. <laughs> Let her feel like she is doing what she needs to do to nurture and care for me. Because I needed, I, I needed that, right, when I went there, right? And so I said, let her do it and just, you know, 
have it now, but know that you're not going to have any more when you go back. So it's okay. And so, you know, since I've been back, I mean, like I lost so much weight. Yeah. <laughs> you look There's great. No sugar. There's no sugar in the house now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's about even understanding that relationship, you know, with your loved ones, you know? So is she, is she feeding me poison? No, she's feeding me love. Exactly. For her, it's not poison, right? For her, it's love. So she's feeding me love. So, you know, that's I think- That's the of that food. Yeah, right? And that's what we have to look at too. It's like, what is the intention of the people around us? What is our intention? And so for me, it's like, you know, I remember, I just really quickly, really quickly little story. I remember a long time ago, I was in India, I was with my teacher, my, you know, and we were going somewhere and we were stopped off at somebody's house. And it was a very, 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 very poor house, like very, very poor. And um, the woman of the house, you know, she, she made tea and, and, and gave us something, you know, and of course, we don't want to take her food because like she has nothing. But with the love that she was sharing, you know, was a blessing and an offering. And, a, and like, it's like, okay, fine. You know, like we will have that because she's giving from so much love and respect and from her heart, right? So that intention from hers, even if, you know, the food may not have been my quality and I could only eat a little bit because my system can't handle a lot of Indian food in India, right? Like I'm not used to it, but I, I was able to have a little bit just to show her appreciation for what she was able to give even if it's just a cup of tea you know and so it's the intention and the frequency of of what she's offering it's not the physical quality of the food right or the drink but it's the intention and frequency of what she's offering and so that always that always stayed with me you know that when people have nothing absolutely nothing they still want to give you something from from their from their love and you know, that, that love frequency is, I'm so grateful for. So, you know, the quality of the tea might not have been to my standard, <laughs> right? It was okay, whatever, but, you know, the, I didn't taste the tea, I only tasted the love, right? Wow. I love that's, that. all, that's what <laughs> I received was the love. And, um, and so that, that's what I'm saying, like, even my mom <laughs> feeds me all this, <sighs> All these wonderful sweets but even i know they're not good for my body but it's like for her that's the way she loves and so that's what that's what my body is is willing to accept to receive that love and support and caring and nurturing so you know it's about looking at that intention yeah the love language of the the food and we can ask ourselves too like what's our love languages what are the love languages of the people around us i just love that concept of love languages it very it's very helpful yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, like absolutely. A lot. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, you know, people around you, people you know, people you don't know that well, but you know, usually people are offering you from from love, from deep love and caring and just generosity, right? And so that generosity means so much more when you look at someone's house and they have absolutely nothing. They don't even have more milk to feed their child, but they still you know, are offering you tea, you know, and it's like, it, it still brings me tears, you know, because it's like, you know, it's, it's such a powerful emotion of love and generosity and gifting and giving that we, when we receive, it's, it's a blessing on them as well, right? Yeah. That's it's true. such a blessing to them when we receive it. When we don't, it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you can't. Uh, like Julie says, in India, hospitality is part of dharma. To offer it and have it received is part of their spirituality. Yeah, yeah it would be such a um, faux pas, but even worse than a faux pas, if I had said no, no, thank you. You know, it's like that would have been like such a such a negative thing. But I can't. You know, you can see the love coming from the person's heart, and that's that's what you're willing to receive. And I think if more of us can give from that love of, and generosity and receive from that same frequency, you know, I think our whole world can change. And that's part of the new, you know, wave of us moving forward of being that homo luminous is that love frequency, is that generosity, is the gratitude, is the appreciation. I think those are uh, musts and requirements and necessary as we move forward. I agree. Those are the foundations. Yeah. 
and and how the earth loves us too oh absolutely you hear me real for years now against the human hatred programming and that people call humans a virus or a cancer that's i have like a full body reaction to that because my job here my dharma is to support humanity and recognizing that no gaia loves you gaia truly loves you the earth truly loves you yeah and to feel that just just like the beautiful wonderful person offering tea our earthly mother also offers us food and drink every day every all single, the time yeah. all the time and that's what we we forget how supported we are and that support comes from gaia from the earth as well as from spirit creator source right both so we tend to focus more on spirit creator source because it's out there than we do right here with gaia and earth and it's like she's always been supporting us yeah and caring for us and nurturing us and without her we would not even be here we would not even exist yeah and we I are mean, maybe, we are a bridge maybe we'd be on another planet who knows but you know indeed. well we did that <laughs> <laughs> we did that and then everybody pitched in and worked on this experiment which is why you're here exactly and again we are here because we chose we chose to be here yes you got invited and you decided to take that invitation right so it was a so it's like stop hating on the experience you know i always say this like we chose to be here, so it's accept it. Accept your body that you chose. Accept the situation that you're in that you chose. All the different experiences. At some somewhere, you know, you have said yes, yes, I I want to experience this. Yes, I want to learn about this. Yes, I want to know about this. Then it's like get out, get out of resistance, get into acceptance, and learn what that is. What is that? That information that's there for you to know or you know integrate, etc yeah and that's the steps once you recognize you put your attention on something then you accept it and then you begin to integrate it and then stuff really starts to change because people are looking for change we've got some fabulous questions around change you know those of you who are in the business of healing or or doing energy work refrain from making any changes or business decisions until spring comes if you can, if you have to wait, or if you have to make any decisions or changes or or look more carefully at the benefits or blocks of certain things, then then at least wait till the end of January. So I can't answer personal reading type questions on a call like this, but I can give you guidance on when to ask the question. Um, and right now you're going to want to wait. And just be because a lot's going to be revealed for you without having to ask anybody else which will be fantastic um and a couple of random pieces around like um i had suggested some time ago to read a book about ca called um becoming homo luminous um it has to do with the galactic cycles and it's just a different expression on the same things that i've taught and so that's what the benefit of that book would be. Why I didn't like Avatar? Go watch it for yourself and you'll decide for yourself. I have my own really specific reasons why I didn't like it. Um, but they're probably going to be different for you. And you might really like it. So I don't want to take that away from you or give anything away. Because yeah. spoilers suck. Um, <laughs> it's true. And then, you know, um, Moria is saying, uh, you know, there seems to be something really thick and and dark that's entered the field um that's just like this is the trick we can't keep putting anything outside of ourselves so if you feel something or you're noticing something new that seems that makes you uneasy especially right now it's because it's in you mm -hmm. and or you're resisting something so it might not actually be dark again this is something that you're going to have to wait to understand so just keep noticing it and then ask yourself how does this feel in my body what does it trigger in me does it trigger childhood trauma does it trigger 
um, trauma around abundant scarcity or victim tyrant or what? And recognize that you're this is a frequency and you're not separate from it. All things are frequency, all beings, all possible consciousness, yeah. all planets, all it's all frequency, it's all waves, it's all waves, right? It's all instruments creating music in the symphony. Yeah. Um, you know, what do I say about uh alcohol or drugs if soda is poison? Well, it depends. Because, and I've taught a class about this, and I highly recommend you might want to grab it, Lisa. Um, I taught a class about addiction and a, my, my very unique anthropological take on addiction and how certain substances that have been brought into our field are communions of the earth, and then others are not. And the reason I say soda is poison, I'm not going to lay it out here today because it's very dramatic and it's dark. I want you to do your own research on the additives and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's no need for me to bring it into the field right now. Go take a closer look at the additives and then you'll know what I'm talking about and why we can't and why I think I had such a terrible reaction to this stuff. Even though I love rum and coke. Are you kidding me? It's great, but can't drink it anymore. That's okay. Um, but there's other ways for us to work with the realm of what we might call communions of the earth. Soda doesn't happen to be one, but honey is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. So we're not, it's not about being deprived. You don't have to be deprived in this life. There's no need for that. There is sweetness in this life. It's necessary. And there are wonderful communions of the earth that we can utilize in ritual but like i said i've taught a very specific class about this i i spent years developing it very carefully because i wanted to make sure i could teach it well and i think that was probably one of the best things i've taught over this past year grab it um i think it'll be profound for you my take on drugs and alcohol and other things um and then yeah, go go ahead. Sorry. Okay. There was a question from Sharon about vocal toning. Um, um, is would that would that be easier on our bodies than the tuning forks, for example? Probably. I think you know your voice is going to have its own natural difference rather than a a tuning fork, which is based in the crystalline and is a lot more precise. Um, but vocal toning has always been shown to be immensely helpful to the to the uh, human body. Mm -hmm. um, one of the tones that I know is so powerful that you can start with right away instead of having to figure out how to do four, three, two hertz or whatever is just C major and middle C. Middle C is very, very powerful. And if you can sing that as loud as you can and you find it on the computer or whatever. Uh, or on the piano, and you just sing middle C as loud as you can, it can make a lot of interesting changes to your body. I, I think what I'm saying, too, is it's not that the that the um, tuning forks aren't useful. It's just that you got to be careful when you use them. So like in the middle of a busy day, when there's so many frequencies going on around you, and when other random human-made non-human-made frequencies and psychic pickup too by the way um that's going to be really hard on your body but perhaps like right before bed or really early in the morning when there's not so such a cacophony of of frequencies going on for your body to have to manage because remember frequency creates form so starting your day out with tuning or ending your day with tuning of some kind can be very, very helpful rather than doing it in the middle of the day. And, and I get regular tuning, by the way. I have a friend who helps me a lot and um, she and I do do work where she does tuning for me and the tuning can tell you a lot about the body. The other, the other way goes around too. Tuning can tell you what's stuck in your body, if you find a good tuning practitioner, they can tell when something's trapped in the body because the tuning fork will stop. 
instead of resonating. And once you get that part of your body resonant, the tuning fork doesn't stop. It's very cool. And it's literal. It's an instant clarity. Um, and it's kind of like a map. And the ancient Egyptians used the pyramids to do that exact thing. So there's a lot of relearning we got to do around cymatics and frequency. But um, think of like, an orchestra and that'll be a good way for you to work like when is the orchestra most quiet <laughs> and then you can receive the tuning better whether it be from your voice or otherwise awesome thank you so much that was great and you know what these are all tools that we can use not ask your body body do you need this right now do you require this right now what do you require right so start don't just um you know use your mind and say oh i should do this Ask your body, body, would you like to do some vocal toning? Would you like to do some, you know, use some tuning forks, et cetera, or anything else? It's so important to ask the body as well. Um, so Elizabeth, do you want to uh, take a moment and talk about the class? Yeah, we're doing something a bit different. Yeah, so let me just a... get the- um, yeah, We're gonna do a class offer this time. I'm going to share my screen, okay, so. Nope. For many nope. reasons, um, you know, I want to make sure that this is affordable for you. So mm -hmm. it's $47 class. And we're going to do a preparation class. It's going to be prep. Um, preparedness is one of my family's expertises. So I come <laughs> from a lineage of preppers, mm. including <laughs> spiritual preparedness. So this will be just perfect. But we're preparing we're the earthly and galactic playing field for 2023. Exactly that. And really being able to understand that you are the wave and so once we understand that we're going to be looking at a, the glimpse of the years to come in more detail so you understand what's what that requires from you physically mentally emotionally and spiritually what are the easiest practices we're going to still talk about practices in this case it's going to be all about understanding and defining what your wavelength is mm -hmm. and then of course how to organize your household remember i told you that the physical world changing the physical world along with your mental spiritual beliefs are how you create change well there's some really good ancient ways to organize your reality in the materium um, that are very important and that work quite well and then in your discovery, how do you navigate? Once you figure out what your wavelength is, well, how do you navigate? What does that mean? What does navigating mean? Well, navigating means the people, places, things, foods, the physical world, the relationships you have, the structures you interact with and how, which structures need changes, which structures should you be a leader in their change and, and should you be a follower? And then of course, how to recognize that since you're part of the waves of consciousness, how does that work? How do you work with the physical earthly world? What is she doing? What's the earth doing? And how do you make sure that you're making that link up with all this galactic new stuff to actually have a normal daily life that it's not necessarily going to be normal, but it's going to be something that you can actually practice that's practical this is very high es esoteric time over this next year we're looking at very high esoteric concepts but they have to be practical or else we're not going to be able to continue forward so my job is to help you to be very practical about your spiritual and human experience so i really want to be able to give you that glimpse on what does that look like? How do we begin to practice together? Because I'm doing it too. I'm learning too. I've made mistakes over this past year that nearly cost me my life. And it's been very humbling, but it's also brought great clarity because that's exactly what I'm here to do is to look very hard at death and evil and darkness, unwrap it, and give the gifts that came from all of that incredible present, that gift of those traumas. So that's exactly what you're going to do too. And if you sit with me in this class, I feel that you'll be able to feel more prepared 
to create a physical and esoteric lifestyle for yourself that will take advantage over the many years to come as this unfolds. Because the rainbow waves, which you are, they're going to converge at some point. And that converging, it's not this next year. It's going to be some years ahead, that convergence, where everything starts to work together. You want to be able to get there. That's when the homo luminous piece is going to be truly revealed. And it'll be revealed at a collective level and a galactic collective level. And it'll be a celebration. It'll be exciting. It'll be scary because it's new. And everything that's brand new has to be integrated. So how do you do that too? Because you need to integrate and recapitulate the past few years. We're entering into an entirely new paradigm where no, there's not stuff happening to you. Now you are the thing <laughs> that is happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a big swap up. That's true sovereignty. And hey, a month ago, I would have never been able to tell you about this. That's how amazing and fresh and powerful and fast all of these things are happening. Awesome. And like Elizabeth said, this class is uh, only $47. So it is affordable at this time. Um, and of course, please do use uh, the gift code from me, TACS10, to receive a 10% gift from me. And this offer is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Elizabeth 12. And again, that is January the 5th. And um, as soon as you purchase, you will receive the Zoom info, but we will send that Zoom, Zoom info out again to you closer to the date as well, just so that you, know, you have it uh, closer to the date. Um, Sally is asking, I'm 82. Will this class help me? Oh, yeah. In fact, um, I love our elders the most because you're, you've been watching the most changes. And the changes that I could say I've seen in the past 40 years, my limited past 40 years, are extreme and extraordinary. And then just double it. So... Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of the elders, they're here for change, yeah, but they're also here to um, watch, to to observe. And if you can stand in your power while being a great observer at 82, then you're going to ignite and uplift the souls that, you know, came here and that were able to get where they are because of you more than anyone else so yes i mean each age group is going to have their different benefits and outcomes but our elders and from 75 and beyond my elders 75 and beyond these are the folks who you know it's like the grandmother tree that nourishes all the other little trees i'm just a little tree but i couldn't have been here and without you you carved the way so that I could do this work without being persecuted. And that change in the world is because of you. So being able to have a greater, grander oversight of all of us little trees and know what's happening and understand it and then be able to implement it for yourself too. I can't tell you how precious that is in consciousness. Absolutely. And I just want to say, uh, again, about the class, it is January 5th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And of course, it will be recorded if you, if, and you'll yes. receive the recordings if you can't attend live. So that's not a problem. Um, you receive the, the audio, the video, and the transcript. Awesome. So audio, mm -hmm. video, and transcript. Because mm -hmm. like, there's, there's so much information that Elizabeth shares. Sometimes you do want the transcript to, because I'm a reader, right? So I like to read, you know, I, I, I grasp concepts much more easily when I'm reading than just when I'm listening. So that's awesome. That's great. So again, that's January 5th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and there will be recordings and the transcript that's available for you. So awesome. Um, anything else you wanted to share, Elizabeth? I know we talked about so many things, but I'm really excited about just this, just this concept of us being the wave, right? <laughs> it's not some other wave that's coming. It's us. It's we are that. And we are the ones that are 
you know, as we are uh, discovering ourselves, doing the reflection, doing the contemplation, asking the questions about what is my greatest fear, what is my greatest desire, getting to know who we truly are, that is what is, cre is going to create the next evolution of who we are, the homo uh, luminous, but also the next evolution of our planet and our, and our, and our collective at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Um, quick, uh, real quick here, Emily asks how long the classes are. Usually my classes are between two and a half and three hours long because I answer questions throughout. So that's the usual. Um, every once in a while they're longer, but I think this one will probably be about two and a half, three hours. Good. Um, you know, my last message just being for this solstice, put attention on your core energy, grounding yourself, recognizing the beings around you that you've surrounded yourself in, especially the beautiful cells of the body and the bacteria and the virome that serve you so wonderfully. Recognize that you are being served by the universe into existence and that the universe favors the complexity the creativeness, the sovereignty of the human being. I'll say it again. The universe favors the complexity, the sovereignty, the creativity of the human being. You are part of the pinnacle of creation, and there's going to be so much more to come. That's why you're here, because you knew that Homo sapiens couldn't stay the way that we've stayed. And so we're here to move forward and break through into the golden age together in equanimity. And that's what's going to be required of um, Is it me or it's Elizabeth? <laughs> I'm going to say it's Elizabeth. I can see Joe moving. Elizabeth, I think you've you've um, cut out, so you might be getting kicked out. I'm gonna keep talking until she realizes and comes back, because usually they don't know <laughs> the people people that get kicked out by accident, booted up by accident. Um, they don't know that they're no longer here and they're continuing to talk and speak and whatever. So we're just going to wait a minute, see if she's there. Now she's out. So we'll see if she is able to come back. Because she was speaking. Uh, yes, there will be a recording of this for sure. Mm -hmm. We're still recording. Hi. It's dropped, uh, dropped me. Um, <laughs> yeah, there she is. But yeah, just lastly, last piece being, you know, it's all about the heart. Why is that? Well, the heart's the one that can read all of the waves. Your heart's the one that can read all the waves. That's why. That's why it's all about the heart now. So, you know, surprise, turns out you're the wave in consciousness now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love and it's And it's always been from the heart space, right? So I always say, come back to your heart, come back to your heart, feel through the heart, experience through the heart you know, get comfortable with being in your heart. Um, yes, there will be recording. They, uh, when I send out the email, it's going to be on YouTube and on the podcast, but you will, you know, you, there will be a recording of it. So for sure, if you're on my email list, you will get the recording. If not, please go to YouTube and um, access it there. Oh my goodness, no wonder my heart feels like it's cracking open. <laughs> yes, and because, you know, we're just going into the solstice now as well right and this holiday season which is all for me uh, as well a lot about the heart um and then next year going into that you know just be be hopeful be uh positive be empowered in in knowing that you're creating what's coming forward in a good way okay you're creating what's coming <laughs> forward in a good way <laughs> So attention and intention, not just intention, but what, you know, what are you focusing on? What are you paying attention to as well? Right. <laughs> Thank you, Lara. It's always good to be with you and your beautiful heart. 
Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. I always have so much fun with you. I always learn so much. And, you know, I am, somebody had said something, oh, gosh, Julie, I think, said that she lost consciousness for a greater part of the conversation. That is normal when That's Elizabeth normal. is on. <laughs> it's so <laughs> normal when Elizabeth is on. It's, you know, how hard it is for me to function when Elizabeth is talking? You, that's, why I, that's why I need the coke. Oh my God, otherwise I would not be able to function either. So it's normal. Um, but yes, so thank you so much everyone for all your questions. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your contribution to the collective, to consciousness and to the planet. And may you all have a wonderful holiday season, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, seasons, greetings, joy, love, whatever you believe in, whatever your faith is, please uh, you know, be happy, be joyful. And I wish you all the best, always, always, always. This is my greatest gift and intention that I get to do this. And it's like, oh my God, how did I get so lucky? I'm so blessed and I'm so blessed to have all of you here with me right before the holiday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And the solstice, wow, amazing. So thank you so much, Elizabeth, for creating this beautiful space for all of us today and this intention and attention to the galactic wave that is coming, which is us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Bless all of you. Much love and blessings, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.